Great, thanks, Steve. Um, so I'm going to dive in a little bit. Um, we also almost have a running joke. Steve, kind of every time he's like, "Hey, Pat, can you do this, or can we do this somehow with web page tests?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's here. It's just buried in a button three folds below and buried somewhere else." So it's always he's at the point where he's now like, "Can you just tell me where the button is that does this?" Um, so unfortunately, yeah, I'm not a UI designer, so everything's a tab or a checkbox and it's all hidden somewhere. So I wanted to try and expose some of the stuff that you maybe didn't know it could do or that's buried somewhere else. For those that aren't familiar with web page test yet, hopefully you've become more familiar with it through the conference, uh, but you drop in an URL, it'll test it from some location in the world uh, with a browser and it'll give you a bunch of data back uh, so you can see what the performance of your site is like. One of the things, so usually when you come to the site, the advanced settings box is hidden and it looks you know, less intimidating. I highly recommend you just leave that open because that's where all the fun happens. And video capture should be on by default uh, whenever you go there now through the UI. If it's not, make sure you check it on. That's where you get some of the really fun information. And the script tab. Uh, if you go into the documentation, this is where the really crazy stuff can be done. It's anything that I didn't think that's going to happen enough that it deserves a place in the UI, but you can do some really cool stuff. Like you can rewrite DNS addresses and you can say, so in this case, I'm going to test web page test org itself. Uh, I use a CDN and I'm going to see what, what benefit the CDN gives me in various places in the world. So I just take the CDN domain and I rewrite it back to the origin domain. So whenever the browser asks for the CDN, I'm just going to point it back to the origin. And I don't have to ma modify my site at all. So you can do this for third-party sites as well. You can see what does Amazon.com look like without using CloudFront, for example, or something like that. You go ahead and run your tests. You'll get a result that looks a lot like this. Uh, you'll have your, your sort of summary data across the top. You'll have uh, the waterfall screenshots, and then if you click into the film strip view, this is a feature that Steve, we owe entirely to Steve, the film strip view itself, but also the waterfall below it, uh, where you can, if you slide things back and forth, the UI is not great, but this very left edge of the film strip aligns with this red line in the waterfall. So as you slide things back and forth, you can see visually OK, the start test button didn't show up until 1.3 seconds. I can figure out what was it waiting for. Oh, yeah, the actual graphic for the start button. Go figure. Um, but you can, if you have start render issues and things like that, you can figure out um, what JavaScript or things like that are blocking your render, for example. And in case you didn't make my talk on Tuesday, Monday, Monday. Uh, if you have user timing marks on your pages, those will show up as, uh, so if you performance.mark, it's the user timing spec for the W3C, you can have your custom user timings also show up in your waterfalls. But the real interesting stuff happens when you start to run more than one test. And if you go into the test history, uh, for starters, I recommend up here in the top corner, you log into the site. The main benefit you get with that is your test history will follow you across browsers. So I can associate your tests as being yours. And you can go back and you can see the tests that you ran. And here I have my CDN and no CDN tests that I ran from a couple of locations around the world. Pick the ones that you want to compare to each other and click the compare button. And you get a multi-view film strip where you can compare the videos against each other. And you can see, well, OK, you know, with the CDN, it saved me about uh, 200 milliseconds on getting the render to the page and even more on the start button. See, the start button showed up at 0.7 seconds. And over here, it didn't show up until 1.3 seconds. And the newest stuff that I've been playing with is the waterfall. So you used to not get waterfalls in a multi-film strip view. You now can fade, woohoo, back and forth between. And you can see, <laughs> it works really well for visualizing why is it faster, what, what changed in the request. And it's not really necessarily just for an AB. You want to compare yourself against a competitor. You want to do it before and after you made optimization changes. You can overlay the waterfalls and say, hey, that thing we tried to move or get rid of. And in this case, basically, the base page, if you look at the very first request, doesn't move at all. I'm actually surprised it's within 10 milliseconds of each other. Um, but all of the other requests are much faster when they're run off the CDN. And that's kind of what you hope to see when you're using a CDN. 
And then down below the waterfall, there's a whole bunch of data graphs. So I talked a lot about speed index and showed you sort of abstract plots. Here you will actually see how much the page renders over time. And you can compare visually on a graph how much faster you displayed your page. And then down below those, all of the timings. You have the, the A and B, you know, all of the non-CDN tests are slower. The requests are about the same. The number of bytes are identical. So you've got a good sense that those are similar tests. And then when you click on creating the video up here, uh, you'll get one of these. You'll probably see these all over the web at this point. Uh, you'll get side-by-side -side videos comparing. You can compare up to nine, and it'll do sort of the Brady Bunch uh, TV window. And this works really well for selling it to managers and bosses. And look, look how much better our experience is. Uh, one of the problems we always had was once you have a video, you can't sort of go back to the data and see where you were from there. So down here, buried, it's kind of in a gray, but there's a, a link that'll take you to a visual data comparison, which will give you something that looks like this, which is a, a more manager-friendly way of saying, hey, with and without, this is what the page load times looked like. This is what the speed index did. Here's the video included, some screenshots. But more importantly, you can go back to the actual tests. You can look at the waterfalls and get back from the videos that you were sent out. Because uh, I always have the problem of, OK, I have this video. Oh my god, I, I forgot which tests I used to create that video. So now you can sort of close the loop and go all the way around. And that's all I had. Uh, feel free to catch me in the hallway anywhere. If you have any other questions about web page tests, I'll be here all day.